You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Secrets of Life with Dr. Don Fouts. Dr. Don will offer challenging and thought-provoking discussion about the many ways you can use to discover more about yourself and others. You'll learn how to change unwanted behaviors so that you can move forward in life more self-aware and free. And now, here's the host of The Secrets of Life, Dr. Don Fouts. Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts. Here with Vincent Lapidula, and you are listening to The Secrets of Life, and we're being brought to you by the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're delighted to have you here. On today's show, uh, we're going to be focusing on reputation. Now, reputation may not always be on the forefront of our minds, although it should be, because it's very fragile and needs to be maintained regularly. Yet, It is not only important for us as individuals, it is also extremely important for an organization. And it can effectively build up an organization or its loss can cause great devastation. However, many of the principles that we'll learn today will give us insight and uh, clear thought into what is so important. We have a special guest with us today. His name is Rob Weinhold, who is the chief executive of the Falston Group, the reputation agency. He's also the co-author of the book, The Art of Crisis Leadership, with Kevin Coward. And we want to welcome you, Rob. Thanks for being here today. Uh, It's my pleasure. (laughs) Look forward to the interview. That's great. Well, Rob, I know that you were in the police department uh, long ago. And not, maybe not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, let's talk about how old you are there, Rob. And so. now you're in crisis leadership <laughs> and reputation. How did you make that change or that transition into that from where you were? Well, it's kind of funny. Being a police officer in the city of Baltimore, there was no shortage of crises. And, you know, I often helped people, as many law enforcement officers across the country do on a daily basis, during life's most critical times. And when you get a knack for helping people, uh, you, you just, it's in your blood and you, you love helping people during life's most critical times, which is why I actually joined the police department. Hmm. Well, I was promoted through the ranks. I became their public affairs director. So I did a lot of work with media relations and really had the, uh, opportunity, uh, to go ahead and represent the men and women of the Baltimore police department for many years. I was a chief of staff in the department of justice. And then I worked for uh, Cal and Bill Ripken and ran their core business for about seven years. And so, I always had a desire to open up my own firm, and nine years ago, went ahead and did that and have focused on crisis leadership, and that is building, strengthening, and defending uh, reputations each and every day. So today, our business is working with large public companies all the way down to small restaurateurs and individuals on various issues from data breach to social media attack, bad press, investigation, litigation, sex scandals, employee relations issues, anything that really costs time, money, customers, and eventually careers, and in the worst case of scenarios, lives. And so there's no shortage of issues out there today. And I guess that's a pretty long-winded way of answering the question how I ended up here. And, and, And I think if I look back at my career, the common thread is really liking to help people during, again, their critical mm-hmm. times. It's a passion of mine. I know it's a passion of you both as well. Now, you, you mm-hmm. talked about the, you, you said that uh, um, your reputational um, reputational risk, that's pretty much the number one factor that in, it, it, that that will impact not only people, but, but corporations. Corporations are people, but, but, but that can, you know, that can be the tipping point with uh, um, Yelp reviews or uh, a, a, anything else out there. That's a, and that's changed dramatically, hasn't it? I mean, at least the, 
the platforms have changed dramatically in years in in the, in the years well think about it uh, a couple of decades ago even what happened was is there was a rumor i told you something you told me something we told somebody else and remember that old game where you tell somebody something and it go, goes around the circle and it's just not what was initially said well today anyone with an internet connection and a recording device can wreak havoc on your brand and so uh -huh. i often talk to organizations and people about building their reputational piggy bank and that means that the first time people hear about you in the court of public opinion should not be when something goes wrong so organizations today have to be relevant traditionally and digitally and they have to tell their story one thing we talk about a lot is is if you don't tell your story someone else will and when someone else tells your story it certainly won't be the story you want told <laughs> and so there's a need in today's marketplace to shape your message tell your story do it with reach and frequency because eventually it's not a matter of if but when crisis will occur and you then need to make a withdrawal from that reputational piggy bank so really really important to manage it and i always tell companies if you don't know what people are saying about you online well you're just not in the game and you're very very vulnerable and the goal is to reduce your points of exposure so that you um, are solvent throughout your, uh, you know, your business practice, whether it's a product, service, or whatever the case may be. Well, I know that um, you work in this field a lot, and, and it's, uh, I think it's really a great thing to do. But when, you, when you're faced with companies who have had some kind of reputational hit, how many do you think, or maybe just a rough percentage, how many do you think are really prepared for that or are any prepared for that? I say very few are prepared. Uh, I often talk about establishing organizational muscle memory. Mm. And we've learned a lot of valuable lessons from people in the past. If you go back to the USS Cole when they were attacked years ago and 17 sailors tragically lost their lives, the admiral of the ship said, hey, uh, you know, we would have lost 170 sailors had not everyone known exactly where to go and what to do to ward off the attack. Mm -hmm. Well, organizations are in many ways the same, and that is that you have to be predictive. You have to be thinking about what could happen, not only in your company, but in the marketplace as a whole. So if you think about Tiger, Toyota, Martha Stewart, Goldman Sachs, Penn State, BP, Ray Rice, the NFL, and we can go on and talk <laughs> about United Airlines, Equifax, wow. Uber, on and on and on, all of these brands you know, had great names, but if you ask a poll of 100 people. What do you think of when you think of Tiger? Well, a year ago, they would have said, oh, man, what a what a scandalous uh, career mm -hmm. he's had. Mm -hmm. But now he's winning. So now people mm -hmm. are talking more about golf. And so United Airlines, well, I don't know, bring your mouth guard, you know, that kind of thing. And so you really need to shape your message. And uh, it, it is imperative that you pay particular attention to that um, reputational equity that I talked about. Yeah, you're talking about the crisis. Crisis happens. You know, loss of life is so. Are there acceptable forms of crisis? Actually, I think that crisis is a growth opportunity. Many people scratch their heads when I say that. I say, listen, crisis is going to happen. It's a matter of what form. You don't need to go looking for it. It will come knocking on your door. So, with that in mind, great companies with sound leadership right. and tremendous infrastructure actually welcome marketplace crisis because it weeds out the uh, the B League, so to speak. Right, the also and, rants. and it allows them to turn short-term adversity into long-term advantage. And that's really the goal when we work with organizations is to make sure that they are prepared to weather the storm, to maintain control. You know, I always say that reputation equals trust and trust leads to valuation. And if you have that in mind and you think about that, uh, you know, in terms of your approach every day, you're not going to be afraid of the things that can happen because uh, you know that, again, you'll be bigger, faster, stronger after than you were before. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're about ready to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we'll uh, hear more from Rob Weinhold, who is the chief executive of the Faustin Group, the Reputation Agency. I'm your host, Dr. Don and you're listening to The Secrets of Life, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. 
male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Well, welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts. And I'd like to remind you that if you would like to call in during this show uh, and make a comment or ask a question, our toll-free number is 866-451-1451. That number again is 866-451-1451. Also, if you would prefer to contact me directly at Donald Fouts & Associates in Bel Air, Maryland, you may do so by going to my webpage, donaldfouts.com, that's Donald, P-F-O-U-T-S dot com, or you can contact me by email at don at drdon dot me, that's don at drdon dot me, or in my office, 410-776-7656. Now, this is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we are talking with Rob Weinhold of the Falston Group and author of the book, The Art of Crisis Leadership. So we're back. Uh, and, and by the way, you can get in touch with Rob at uh, falstongroup.com. Yes. We'll throw that in there real quick, but go ahead. Thank Sorry. you. Um, well, as we were talking, Rob, you're talking about all these different um, people that are, you know, kind of headlighting in the news and making uh, some common mistakes and things with reputation. Um, what is the relational equity? I've heard that term before. And uh, how does that fit in with that? Well, reputational equity is something that is incredibly important. Uh, again, you want to make sure that you build that over time. In other words, build your capital account with reputation. And that is make sure that good news is in the marketplace, what you're doing as a company, what you're doing uh, you know, in terms of servicing your community and so on and so forth. You know, we look at Disney. Uh, several years ago, there was a very, very tragic case where a young child was eaten by uh, one of the alligators mm -hmm. in the pond. And you know, I don't think any one of us hears that story and doesn't get sick to their stomach. But if you take a look at Disney from a reputational perspective and you ask 100 people what they think of when they think of Disney, they'll talk about most likely the wonderful memories and so on and so forth. And as horrible as that tragedy was, they have enough equity that over time they were able to do all the right things for the right reasons for the family, uh, but also maintain their presence. I mean, some of those crises actually shatter and put a company out of business. And in their case, it didn't. And again, a uh, very, very tragic uh, moment. I was down there about a year or so ago and actually noticed the changes that they made. which was mm -hmm. very obvious. They had, you know, rope fences up around the waterways. They had signs up saying <clears throat> there was uh, alligators in the water and things like that just yeah. to warn everybody. They did a great job. I think. Right. And by up to that up to that point prior to that tragedy, they – everyone felt that they were doing everything that they could and they and as you said they built up that you know when you think of disney you think of you know the magic kingdom <laughs> happy and, mm -hmm. and you know and um that's where you know everyone goes after they win the super bowl and and <laughs> and, and and but they were able to say we can weather this storm and we're going to take that next step and i, and I i've learned that that an apology and i, I don't want to uh, boil this down to just a, being an apology, but an apology comes with with three steps. Number one, I'm sorry. Number two, here's what I did. Number three, here's what I'm going to do differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, the, the resilient moment communications, is that something that you plan for? You know, when you say, here's what's going to happen. 
or here's the possibility, because as you said before, everything happens. Stuff's going to happen. There's not, you can't say crisis is never going to hit me personally or with my business. Yeah, I mean, the resilient moment communications model is something I certainly subscribe to, developed by a gentleman named Dr. George Everly out of Hopkins. And, um, you know, I spent my career in communications for the most part. But what the model dictates to us is that if you answer these five questions, then more than 95% of the questions that people have about a particular issue will have been answered. Hmm. And the questions are what happened, what caused it, what are the short and long-term effects, what's being done about it, and what needs to be done in the future. Right. And if you take a, a hard look at the case study involving Disney, since we happen to be talking about it, they answered those questions and they did it immediately with a very high degree of decisiveness and integrity. And that's really what people want when they take a look at a company or an individual, actually, who has done something wrong. You see, I think America is a fairly forgiving society as long as they believe that someone is truly remorseful and that they won't make the same mistake again. Now, you know, you have your repeat offenders out there who, you know, lose their credibility and the next thing you know, they're off the map when it comes down to the court of public opinion. But, you know, Disney in particular did a great job. Southwest Airlines has done a great job with this uh, when they face some of the issues with their planes. Domino's Pizza years ago. Oh, my th gosh. There was an incredible story in 2009 where a couple of employees at Domino's in the Carolinas decided to, let's just say, doctor up a pizza and some subs that they shouldn't uh, have doctored up before they went out the door. And they did what all great employees do. They made a YouTube video of themselves sure. and put it online, right? You know, Why wouldn't you do that if you right. were an employee, right? And so, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because um, – the chief executive of Domino's at the time not only faced an incredible amount of scrutiny because of what the employees did, but around the same time, there was marketplace sentiment regarding the taste of Domino's pizza. A lot of pizza people said it tasted like cardboard. So if you could think about that, employees um, dismantling and reshaping a pizza with their own fluids, which is horrible. Mm -hmm. And right, I mean, you know, it's well put. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the marketplace sentiment of a pizza tasting horrible. One of those crises would have knocked a company off the map, both a perfect storm. Mm -hmm. But what the uh, chief executive did at the time is he came out and very assertively addressed both issues, right. double down on quality control, double down on uh, franchisee management, and so on and so forth. And he actually built a micro community that is stronger now than it's ever been. And since 2009, in the years that the chief executive has been uh, in power, so to speak, he's retired this year. Do you know that Domino's stock has outperformed Apple, Amazon, and yeah. Google wow. mm -hmm. simply by the way that he handled the crisis? Sure. So in that case, crisis was opportunity, and he used it as a platform for uh, success. Absolutely, opportunity in that case. It, it, the, you see it every day, and to the point where they're they're filling potholes mm -hmm. for people. They say, you bring us, it, 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 tell us what the mm -hmm. problem is. All right, we agree, and here's our here's our solution for you. So you're right. They've built a they've built a loyal following, and 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 kept moving past that. Yeah. And there's another concept called reputational elasticity, which we talk about. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means is, is that when you're highly elastic as a business, like a coffee shop or cleaners or so on and so forth, that means consumers have many choices. Okay. And so if, hey, you don't like Starbucks, you go to Dunkin' Donuts. If you don't like Dunkin' Donuts, you go to 7-Eleven and so on and so forth. But low elasticity is like your cable company or your phone service right. or whatever the case may be, and you don't have a lot of options. So the higher the elasticity of the business you're in, the more attention you need to you know, pay to customer service and making sure that you're able to handle these crises because, as you know, people will vote with their feet and their pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned a couple – you mentioned two things that were kind of out of the CEO's hands – um, when we come back, I probably want to jump into you know, why do people, why do individuals do bad things? I mean, that's that, that that's going to take an entire segment. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be great. Does when that happen? <laughs> <laughs> well, when we come back from the break, we'll continue talking with our guest, Rob Weinhold of the Paulson Group. This is The Secrets of Life, and I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be back right after these messages. 
Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the real realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Well, welcome back. We're glad you're here with us. You're listening to Secrets of Life live from BBM Global Network, and I am your host, Dr. Don Fouts. And we're talking with Rob Weinholt of the Falston Group, and uh, we'll continue on. Um, Rob, one of the things that we like to, to uh, talk about here and what I definitely talk about is how why people respond and do the things they do and uh, how that affects their living, how that affects their interactions with other people. And uh, many of my clients, I spend a bit of time with them. But uh, what is your take on why people do things that they do? Why do people do bad, <laughs> stupid yeah, do stuff? Bad I wish I had that answer when I was about <laughs> 8, 10, 12 years old when my parents would say, why would you do that? Uh, I went in a vapor lock. I had no idea why I did it. But – you know, it's funny, you know, throughout my career, I've had an opportunity to, to work with uh, many corporate executives and also, you know, individuals. And what I've noticed is there are really four core motivators on why people just do bad things. And it really comes down to power and control, which I lump together, but they're really a little bit different. But I lump them together for the purposes of conversation. Money, sex, and revenge. So power and control, money, sex, and revenge. And if you think about the various um, high-profile people that you see on the news or even the people in your lives, and they do crazy things that are out of nowhere, and you start to scratch your head or raise your eyebrow and go, man, how could that person have done that? It generally comes down to one of those four buckets. And so I ask people often – Take a look at yourself, but look at who you surround yourself with. You know, at my age, I've really come down to identifying two types of people in the world for me, those who give me energy and those who take it away. Mm -hmm. And I often find that the people who take it away generally are motivated by one or more of these things when they start getting into some bad behavior. And so, again, it doesn't mean one of the four buckets. You could be motivated by a couple, but there generally is a primary it's like – for instance, power and control and money, that's a big one. Well, right. money many times is secondary right. to the power and control. So anyway, uh, those are the four reasons. And I will say very quickly while we're talking about it, people often ask me, well, what's the secret to get through crisis? You know, on the personal side, many of us have dealt with issues like divorce or addiction or health-related issues, financial struggles, or <laughs> gosh, just waking up every mo morning and finding two socks that match. I mean, that in and of itself can be <laughs> stressful. And it's not easy to wake up every morning and make it through the day. And then again, on the professional side, we talked about it earlier, social media attack, bad press, mm -hmm. poor financial results, so on and so forth. But those who find themselves in trouble, it 
in my experience, do two things right away and they do it really well. Number one, they admit they're in crisis, right? It's not Mm -hmm. the frog in the frying pan. They put their hand up and they say, look, I've got a problem. And the second thing they do really well is they leverage their resources. Hmm. You know, many of us, um, we think we can do it alone or we think we're not in trouble. And the next thing you know, you know, it's like that riptide. We're way, way out in the ocean and help is too far away. But the quicker that people are able to do that, the more quickly that they're able to cycle through life's most difficult times. A lot of times you'll hear people say, you know, how did this happen? And they don't want the answer to how it happened. Because you can methodically lay out every point that, that, that led up to that. They want to know, how does this stop? How do I make this stop? Now, you talked about those four areas, the power, control, money, sex, and, and, and revenge. But there are also reputational things that happen outside your control. Um, the mob mentality, and it's a, it was taught earlier, never underestimate the power of people in a mob. Now, use use any term that you want. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Don, during the break, Don and I were talking about your book, The Art of Crisis mm-hmm. Leadership, which is available on Amazon, by the way. That's but right. the um, in there, you talk about a a local business, a small business that just wanted to just wanted to build their business and build their brand, and for some reason, the word "hun." set this town, the town of Baltimore, on fire. Wrong term to use, but it, it really just it lit up such an emotion. Yeah, I mean, the term hun, for people that don't know, is just uh, a term of endearment in Baltimore, really short for honey. And for generations, people have used this term. Uh, again, hey, how you doing, hun? I'll have bacon and eggs, uh, hun, for breakfast, or whatever the case may be. And so Denise Whiting from Cafe Hun, who I think is an extremely successful and strong woman uh, who built a business for more than two decades, a single mom, just I have a tremendous amount of respect for her. She, under the advice of counsel, trademarked the term Hun to try to protect her business interests. And frankly, it's what companies across the world do each and every day. Mm -hmm. What she didn't count on was the backlash from the Hamden community in Baltimore and then Baltimore as a whole. And so what quickly uh, seemed like a sound legal decision became a firestorm almost overnight where people pushed back against Denise and the cafe and said, who are you to go ahead and try to steal the term hun? Well, one thing led to another. I got called uh, because of the work I do. And I happened to be fishing uh, in New Jersey for flounder, if you wanted to know. And Denise calls me. Wait, I'm writing. Flounder. Yeah, in flounder, for flounder. It's called fluke, actually. But anyway. So the the interesting part of it is I go back to Baltimore, I meet with Denise, and she says, look, I sleep with a gun, my chest hurts, Wow! and um, I I don't want to be too personal here, but but she didn't feel like coming to work each day, (laughs) and things were really, really bad. So if you think about an otherwise really strong, successful woman who was beaten down by this issue, I've seen it over and over and over again where otherwise very, very successful people are now in isolation. They've lost hope. They lost their fight. And that's exactly what happened to Denise. So we began to work with her and it was very evident that, um, you know, she wasn't telling her story like she showed over explaining why it happened. She was being bullied by people to the point where one gentleman in particular would come in the restaurant and scream at patrons and throw things. Her life was being threatened and so on and so forth. And so we put a number of uh, tactics in place and slowly but surely she got stronger and stronger. Uh, One thing led to another. And then Gordon Ramsay with Kitchen Nightmares came to town and we thought that was the perfect platform for her to symbolically give back the term Hun to Baltimore, which she did. She relinquished Mm -hmm. control of it. And then all was well in Whoville after that. But the point Mm -hmm. I'm making is, is that uh, crisis is a beatdown. And I don't Mm -hmm. care how strong you are when you feel like you're the target and uh, you're under attack on a daily basis and you begin to feel that isolating feeling and you're beginning to lose hope. And, you know, many people that we've worked with uh, candidly don't want to be in this world any longer. And so we take our jobs very seriously. To me, there's no higher calling than to help someone who is in need. And and that's what drives our passion each and every day. But Cafe Hun is a uh, just a it is a case study we use in the book and uh, one of my favorite clients over time because um, I just feel like she was a, a good person who just made a mistake by taking some bad advice 
but it's turned around and uh, she's doing great today. We're happy to report. I really love that. It's it's a great example. And actually, all she was doing was trying to build her brand. Build her brand and really protect her brand because Mm -hmm. a lot of people know how, you know, frankly, lucrative Hun can be, uh, whether it's festivals or events, whatever the case may be. And that's all she was doing, again, under the advice of counsel, but misread the court of public opinion. And that's what happens a lot. People make these decisions. And they they don't understand or they don't predict the feedback or the pushback they're going to get. And we see it with large public companies all the way down to small restaurateurs like Cafe Hun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, great. We're going to come back with more from Rob as we talk with him. He is the uh, executive chief at the Falston Group. Um, this is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And you're listening to this live. This is The Secrets of Life. I'm your host, Dr. Don. Please feel free to call in with any questions. The number again is 866-451-1451. Again, that's 866-451-1451. So we'll be right back after these messages. Please stay with us. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you're listening to The Secrets of Life. We have our guest here with us, Rob Weinholt from the Falston Group, and uh, you also can find him on falstongroup.com, and uh, we are talking about reputation and crisis. Now, Rob, um, are there any kind of generally accepted categories for crisis? Can you break it up? Well, that's a really good question because a lot of people are like, well, crisis, what does that mean? And and it kind of means something different to everyone, but there are seven generally accepted categories of crisis. Uh, The first being natural disaster, which we've seen a lot of, you know, tragically in this Mm -hmm. country with hurricanes and so on and so forth. And then technological, and it could be IT related or it could be something like we saw with BP with the oil leak in the bottom of the Gulf, which Mm. is a whole other case study in and of itself. Confrontation is another. And in this day and age, people have the ability to mobilize more quickly now than they ever have in in history. So if a group of people doesn't think that your company is green enough or diverse enough or you engage in discrimination or there's some Me Too issues or whatever the case may be, they can mobilize and go after your brand. And frankly, you've got a problem if you don't know how to handle it, particularly if you go into a hole and you don't tell your story. Mm-hmm. Malevolence is really when more criminal in nature or mischievous in nature where people might mobilize to overtake the company or leave the company. Um, organizational misdeeds, that's when your uh, comptroller runs off with the piggy bank. 
uh, workplace violence, and this is very tragic. We've seen a lot of this, active shooter situations. Sure. In fact, in uh, in Harford County of Lone, we've had this type of situation uh, a number of times over the past couple of years. But more and more uh, workplaces need to be concerned with active shooter drills and making sure the mm-hmm. right policies and protocols in, are in place. And the last category is business relations. And we talked a little bit about this, and that's generally – you know, bad press, human resources, uh, lawsuits, the type of things that businesses routinely have to deal with and manage correctly to make sure that they are able to stay in business. And so those are the seven generally accepted categories of crisis. And what I tell folks uh, when I work with um, organizations is is we'll go in and do what's called a crisis audit or assessment, if you don't like the word audit. And we'll interview executive teams. It could be eight people, 10, 15, whatever it is, and boards of directors and We interview them individually, and we say, if you think of your business goals that you want to hit at the end of the year, what are the things that could derail you and your company and cost you time, money, customers, and your careers? And you'd be amazed at how transparent people are and what they throw on the table. Our marketing's inaccurate, or, you know, the chief executives, uh, they say say snide things to people. It could be a lawsuit waiting to happen, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And we put together a list, and then we marry that against industry research, and we come up with the top eight, 10, or 12 things that could potentially derail the company. And then we work on each one of those to reduce the points of exposure. Then we'll put a crisis communications plan in place to make sure that when the moment occurs, they're ready to meet the moment. Mm -hmm. And the third thing we do is media relations training to get the primary and secondary spokespeople uh, basically 60 minutes ready. And so when you see yourself on camera and you didn't realize that you had a twitch or you blink a thousand times a minute, (laughs) it's very, very telling to watch yourself. And it's just not in the event of uh, an interview with the news media, it helps you communicate more effectively. And I always say that it doesn't matter how smart you are, how many vowels and consonants you have after your name. If you cannot communicate effectively and articulate your position, you will never be as successful as you want to be as if you were a good communicator. Mm-hmm. So really, really important stuff here. Right. And, and, and communication skills are, are important in everything, but in crisis – That's where people turn. They swivel their chair and they look at you and they say, help me. Mm -hmm. Help me to understand. Help me to accept. Help me to move forward with this. Yeah. I mean, effective crisis management is effective leadership strategy and communications. And there's a misnomer in the marketplace that crisis management is just about spinning a news story. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you and everybody that's listening, you don't spin your way through crisis. You lead your way through crisis. Mm -hmm. And it's about the decisions you make. I mean, you can't just gloss over and make sure that you've got a pretty news story because the problem is still there. To me, communications is, I don't want to say the easy part, but it's the part that you should be able to get right, although many people get it wrong. But but it's about your leadership decision making, the okay. strategies you implement, whether you're able to accomplish your goals or not, and then again, being able to articulate your position. Chief executives, by their nature, are generally fairly optimistic people. In other words, they're aggressive. And so Tony Hayward, when he dealt with the oil leak in sure. the Gulf, right, with BP – Uh, And he was on the uh, morning news segment right after the leak happened. They asked him, well, when do you think this leak will be capped? And he said 30 days because he was, you know, that's what he was told and everybody was optimistic. The problem is he boxed himself in. So 30 days later, NBC Nightly News had an oil cam at the bottom of the ocean. And Brian Williams at the time was reporting uh, every night uh, how much oil, which, by the way, the, the oil slick in the Gulf was the size of Puerto Rico getting bigger by the moment. Of course, Brian Williams had his own issues at a certain point, right? Right, right. Um, so, so again, I, I think it's being able to communicate in a very credible manner and be optimistic, not in a Pollyannic standpoint or, or point of view, but optimistic in terms of being able to solve a problem. One thing that I've, that I've noticed it, it, for success, and whether it's in personal life, business, um, whenever, t- whenever your reputation takes a hit, is not, hey – it's done. Everything's good. It's here's my corrective action plan. You know, if I don't if I have a cap in place that says I don't have it together today, Dr. Don, let me meet with you and let me let me start to start to build that back. Um, that goes a lot further, I would imagine. I mean, that, you tell me, what's your best type of client, for instance? What, what are they? Well, going back to what you just said, I mean, people want to know what happened, what caused it, the short and long-term effects, what's being done about it, what needs to be done in the future. Can you answer those five questions with credibility? 
And if that answer is yes, and you're able to articulate it, well, then you're well ahead of the game. So best kind of client, I would say the best kind of client for me is a very coachable client. The worst kind of client is a client with a big old ego who, who knows everything, you know, they, they call you in and they want to know your advice and then they do their own thing. And so, uh, you know, and, and again, it, it's very difficult to manage your own crisis uh, by yourself. You've got to rely on those people around you. And at a certain point, you have to trust the experience and instincts of others, no matter who they are. I'm dealing with a very, very high profile crisis right now of an individual and, um, his wife is just amazing because she's giving excellent advice to him, which he's communicating to me. And the next thing you know, we've surrounded this gentleman with great advice to the point where every time he tries to question, he kind of backs himself into a corner, and uh, but, but in a very constructive way. So listen to those around you who are not as emotionally vested. Well, great. This is all great information. I love it. Uh, We're getting ready to take another break. We'll be right back. You're listening to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Don, and I'm here with Vincent Lapidula and Rob Weinhold. Uh, I hope you stay with us, and we'll be right back after these messages. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, Every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage, that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses. Mystical. Present. Past. And future. All in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. All right, we are back. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and you're listening to The Secrets of Life being broadcast to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, before the break, we were talking about uh, the crisis and the reputation of businesses and how we are dealing with those things. I know when I deal with my clients as well, uh, they usually have something in their background or in their behaviors or their life patterns that cause them to stumble in life and they come in with it being kind of in crisis wondering how can I fix this and uh, most of the time we have to get to it and kind of identify it because it's already there but they would like it to go away Rob I'd kind of like to know from you uh, the companies you work for the business executives um, how much are they the same way with that and trying to maybe understand there's a problem but kind of want to ignore it and hope that it goes away when it doesn't Yeah, we Mm -hmm. use the term corporation, Fortune 100, Fortune 500, whatever the case Mm -hmm. may be. And we think that they're, you know, these large abstract entities. But when you get right down to it, we're dealing with people. And so many times leaders choose to ignore that HR issue that won't go away or the poor financial results or the inflated sales results. And they don't know why it exists. You know, Wells Fargo is a great example of that. You know, these just increases in sales at the uh, you know tactical level in the branches which bubbled up in the profitability and the next thing you know 
Uh, they're getting, you know, hammered for, uh, what, a billion dollars in fines. But Large the point I'm making ever. is, is that people generally ignore those problems, whether, you know, and the metaphorical example is the leaky faucet or the, you know, uh, the rattle in the engine. But if it's Thanksgiving Day and company's coming over, and all of a sudden the pipe bursts, you don't care what it costs. Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it, you know. But, but interestingly enough, I think your audience will like this. The Institute for Crisis Management um, – did a study and they analyzed all the crises that occurred in the country in every category. And they found that 68%, almost 70% of the crises that occur are actually smoldering issues, which means they exist, sure. but people fail to do something about it. And then they looked at all the categories, discrimination, mismanagement, white collar crime, so on and so forth. And the largest category was mismanagement. So what that tells me, if you marry the research, is that we know about these problems as leaders and we mismanage or fail to do something about it because a lot of leaders hope it goes away or somebody will change their mindset tomorrow. And the fact is, is if you don't hit these issues head on, they're not going to go away. They're only going to exacerbate and be bigger problems in the future. And if you trace back the roadmap of many of the crises that occur and hit an inflection point where they blow up in the court of public opinion or in civil court or criminal court, a long time ago, we could have put a cap on it if handled the right way, sure. and a lot of people were not treated with dignity and respect, and as a result, mm -hmm. you're out of business. And, and it, we talk about, Don started this off, but Dr. Don, we talking about um, uh, crisis within an individual life. And, 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 and again, people wrap this around, you say, Citigroup or, or, or Wells Fargo or, or the Wall Street. But you, we can take it all the way down to Bob's Towing. Yeah, we're there. There might be some Me Too uh, or sexual impropriety, but it's just understood and it's a, it's allowed. And um, so to break through that behavior, uh, number one, because it, it, instead of just making a payoff and and going on, if that if that behavior is not changed, it's going to happen again and again and again. That's a, it's you know. Well, it keeps you in business. That's not why you want to be in business. Well, yeah. it's a function of leadership and a function of culture, right? And so mm -hmm. if you do have Me Too uh, movement um, activity or issues mm -hmm. going on in your organization and you tolerate it, well, then, of course, you're going to eventually have a powder keg, which will blow up. And then one person says something, then four, then five. The next thing you know, you have a runaway train. You're out of business and your life is never the same. But again, I go back to leadership and culture and mm -hmm. it all starts at the top and it has to be enforced, not just by the leader, but the people that work within an organization organization as well. I mean, basically, if you tolerate it, you give tacit approval for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. The input that, um, um, th th that, that we hear and the things that I found in your book, uh, you, I want to touch back on what we started with and that you, crisis to you is an opportunity, an opportunity to make things right and to grow. Correct statement? Correct. All right. And it's the same way. So if we if we distill it down to its its lowest common denominator, a guy that lost his job mm -hmm. and is facing issues of maybe age or just see the lack of education, things like that, um, he can he can rebrand himself uh, ethically, morally. And, and and step back into this, or he can, you know, remain sizzle no steak, or what do you what do you say sizzle no bacon? All Is sizzle it, no bacon. All sizzle no bacon. <laughs> we want the bacon. We can get the sizzle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, and that's um, and, and that's what you it, that's what you look at. Now, have you walked into corporations before, or or work, started working with individuals, high profile individuals, where you just say, this is not salvageable? Yeah, th there have been people that have contacted us and they have done things that are so egregious. They're just simply off of our moral scale. Mm -hmm. You know, if you prey on uh, vulnerable people or you don't right. do something so egregious by, you know, community or moral or legal standards, then it's uh, potentially a case we won't even touch. And, and the reason is, is because let's say you're going to jail. Well, OK, you're going to jail and you're going to go to jail for 10, 20 years, whatever the case may be. 
the only thing that's going to rebuild your reputation is once you get out of jail and time and distance away from the incident, in which case we're not going to be effective at that point because we know that um, by any moral standard, just your behavior is not acceptable. So, and again, we've got to look in the mirror each and every day too and say, who are we working with and are we working with them for the right reasons? There are people that make horrible mistakes and find themselves in horrible situations. And, you know, we don't mind working with those folks because we know what their uh, intentions are. But, right. um, you know, that, that, that's that's a gut check for us. And we get called by people that are just, uh, you, 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 we, we just don't want them in our lives, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. What do you um, find that the most successful people do? Successful people in terms of? Of in kind of navigating crisis. Right. Well, we talked a little bit earlier about admitting that they're in crisis. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a really, really important mm-hmm. part of it because nobody wants to admit that they have a problem. They leverage the resources around them, but they also put their hand up and they say, listen, I want to be honest and very candid with you. And we call it their navigational fix, where they are today. And then when we work with a client, we talk about their life, where they want to be in six months, 12 months, 36 months, whatever the case may be. And then we chart the course to get there so that every decision they make is incremental to achieving the larger goal. And so a lot of our work, while we put out the issue, you know, put out the fire and deal with the smoldering issue, it really turns into life coaching because we're finding that these people need help personally and professionally, and they need someone that they can trust and is loyal to them. And that's who we are. And that's where you send them to Dr. Don. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back after these messages. And you're listening to Secrets of Life and BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Don Fouts, and we'll be right back. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Jenny Friend is a licensed marriage and family therapist and a certified clinical sexologist, commonly known as a sex therapist, with over 30 years of experience in the field of sexuality. She's been a researcher and teacher and is further trained in human development over the lifespan. She's also a published author and a radio personality. Her specialized training in lifespan developments means she can help individuals, couples, and families through difficult developmental phases. Her primary ways of working are through the tools of cognitive, behavioral, and psychoenergetics theories and techniques. Couples, individual men and women, and families are also welcome. She can meet in her office in Costa Mesa, California, or on the Internet through Skype at Jenny Friend MFT. Call 714-210-9200. You can also send an email from her website at www.centerforclarity.org. That phone number again is 714-210-9200. Well, we are back again. Welcome back. This is Dr. Don, and you're listening to The Secrets of Life with BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, we've had a great uh, show so far. We're still talking with Rob Weinhold and uh, some of his insight and values, and uh, we'll continue that. Yeah, and, and Rob, we were um, before we went to the break, we were talking about uh, different types of clients, different types of crisis, and it, you mentioned the, the resilience model. Was that to, is that the, am I talking about the right phrase? Is it? Yeah, you are. I, you know, one thing that's important is none of these cases we work on are exactly the same. We're dealing with human beings. And so I rely a lot on instinct and experience mm-hmm. um, to figure out where we need to go with a client. But there's uh, something called the resilient leadership model. Okay. Again, Dr. Everly had a hand in this and he developed it. And basically, these are the attributes of the most successful leaders in the world. When they deal with crisis, they operate with a high degree of integrity, 
They're able to communicate effectively. We talked about that earlier in the show, how important that is. And they're able to make decisions. They're decisive. You know, research shows that people would rather follow someone who makes a wrong decision than no decision. They're optimistic. Right. Again, not Pollyannic, but optimistic about finding a solution to navigate their company or someone navigate themselves through life's most difficult times. They also put their hand up and they take responsibility. They say, I'm wrong. They're able to look you in the eye and say, I screwed up. Here's why. They also develop what's called a resilient culture. And that means my success depend on, depends on yours and yours depends on mine. There's interdependability. And again, we sink or swim as a team. And the last attribute of the uh, resilient leadership model is behavioral body armor. And what that means is, is that as a leader, you need to lead, which means that You know, crisis can be a campaign. It can be demoralizing, isolating. It can beat people down to the depths to where they don't want to be in this world anymore. So that means you need to take care of yourself. You need to eat right. You need to sleep right. You need to exercise. And again, rely on those people around you who can give you good counsel during your tough time, and you'll learn a tremendous amount about yourself. So, I mean, Integrity, communication, decisiveness, optimism, taking responsibility, developing that resilient culture along the way, and of course, taking care of yourself, which we deem behavioral body armor. Those are the the secrets of resilient leadership, and I encourage every listener to embrace them. All right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful ideas. Amazing stuff. It really is. Uh, It has really been a great time uh, talking with Rob and getting some of that insight and wisdom that he's developed over the years. I also want to uh, plug his book for you, The Art of Crisis Leadership, on Amazon. And I also uh, look him up at faustongroup.com and uh, find out some more information there. Well, uh, I want, it looks like we're going to be about out of time right now. Thanks for being with us. It's been a great pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed this show. Now, if you prefer to contact me directly, you may do so by going on my webpage, donaldfouts.com, Donald, P-F-O-U-T-S dot com, or by email, which is don at drdon dot me, M-E. Uh, and I'll do my best to get back with you as soon as possible. Or if you want to call me, you can call at 410-776-7656. Uh, and I'll, I'll try to get to everybody. Uh, Now, um, in our upcoming shows, uh, next week we'll be talking about um, a program that is for men recovering from sexual addictions and other acting out behaviors. It is titled Operation Destiny. Uh, After that, um, we'll be looking at other things like how to establish your credit and also uh, brain, the brain and the differences between male and female thinking and our communication. Uh, I look forward to being with you again the next time as we continue to discover more about the secrets of life. Uh, This is the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So until next time, this is your host. I am Dr. Don, along with Vincent Lapidula, and we hope you have a great day. See you next week. This has been The Secrets of Life with Dr. Don Fouts. Tune in each week and learn how to change unwanted behaviors so that you can become the best person you can be. Here on Dr. Don Fouts, The Secrets of Life. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.